Okay. Our lesson begins in the seventh chapter of Ezra. Subject is Ezra Seeks God's Law. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go through those first four verses because it just it gives us a, a, a history. Who, whose son was who until we get down to uh, we went through King Uzzai. Uh, we went through Phineas. We went I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the Bible. I'm in the uh, NIV. Excuse me. So it goes on it goes all the way down. Uh and I'm gonna start the sixth verse. Uh Ezra. Ezra, who was a priest and a prophet, came from Babylon because remember uh Nebuchadnezzar had had taken everybody uh to Babylon and made them slaves. Now that happened uh that happened because they were disobedient. The wages of sin is death. Now that doesn't mean you lay down with a heart attack and, and, and die. That's not what it means. It means spiritual death. And you know, the more sins we commit, the 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 our our spiritual health deteriorates. There's some things that we just do anymore as Christians. Uh, my goddaughter told me one day, she said, Mom, if you weren't if you weren't uh, a pastor's wife, I think you'd be at a bar sitting on the stool. And I said, Well, first of all, I can't get up on the stool. Let's start with that. Then the next thing, I wouldn't be at the bar. You know, you, you, you don't understand me as well as you need to. Okay. So uh, it it makes a difference where you are. And in this time, it, it would be like what churches uh, you belong to, the doctrine of that, of that particular denomination. All that's important. So Ezra came up from Babylon, uh, and as I said, they were there from their disobedience, and Babel, the Babylonians came and took all of them away. So Ezra, he he was in in that group, but he was a teacher, well versed in the law of Moses, which the Lord, uh, the God of Israel, had given. It's not like Moses said, "Let me come up with some stuff." I this one sounds like a good idea. That was not the case. Not at all. God, uh, God gave him the desire, the, uh, the ability, and the opportunity. So the king granted him everything he asked. He, he went before the king, and he asked uh, asked the hand the hand of the Lord his God was on him. He knew that. You know, you know, Christian, you can be in, you can be in the Walmart. You go in to buy some milk and eggs and butter, and you see somebody, and there's a spiritual connection there, and you just know they Christian. At the same time, we often can tell who is unChristian, who is unsaved. So anyway, some of the some of the Israelites include the priests, the Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, the temple servants, all came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. So this this gives the Bible gives us a history who was whose son, who was uh, the different kings, and how they rose to be that. Uh, so King King uh, Artaxerxes, he didn't believe he wasn't a believer in God as much as he was 
uh, willing to let uh, to let people practice their faith. It wasn't his; it was the Israelites. So, but but he respected that. Uh, my husband often says, because he was from the south, he said, when people uh, a, a guy could be drunk, staggering, falling down drunk, and when he gets Get, get ready to pass the church, he straightens up until he passes. Now, that's respect. That's respect. We're doing some of everything in the church now. We're wearing some of everything in the church. We're practicing other things in God's church. And it's important that in the sanctuary of God, because that belongs to him. That is the place that we worship, and that's our purpose for coming into the sanctuary. So anyway, Ezra arrives in Jerusalem uh, on the fifth month of the seventh year of the king. Uh, he had begun his journey from Babylon because on the first day of the first month, uh, he had arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month. So it's just giving us a, a, a time frame. We don't know what, what month, we're guessing about what year, but that ain't even important. It's just important to know that Ezra had received the word of God. Uh, he knew it, he studied it, and he was able to teach it. And, and, and that's important. Not everybody has the gift of teaching. And so we must be careful because teachers in the church have a responsibility. First of all, we, are, we should be held at a higher standard. Now, superintendent Sunday school and Sunday school teacher for the adults, there's some things I just can't do. I can't come in here with a skin-tight dress on. I, I, everybody be like, what's, what's she doing? You know. Uh, I can't come in here with a uh, with braids down to my thighs. People are gonna look at me and say, mm, that ain't it. "Not that braids are wrong. Wear them wherever you want, but that has to do with fashion." Now it should not matter if I wear, you know, long braids. I'm I'm gonna look peculiar, but it, it wouldn't be a big thing. But it's a distraction. It's a distraction. And so we don't want anything that will distress us, uh, pull us away from our purpose, because we're here to hear the word of God. This ain't a fashion show. But out of respect for what it is, we should be careful how we present ourselves before God. And we're just, we're getting, my husband and I had this conversation yesterday. And we were saying, you know, pastors are coming in with the shirt, I'm buttoned down to here and to show off their gold chain necklace and they got on a, a, a shirt, won't even tuck it in. And some blue jeans. And maybe I'm still old fashioned. I, I don't know. But it just seems to me like we're copying more of the world's ways. And not only is ways, but their, but their behavior. We got stuff going on now in the churches that just wasn't there in yesteryear. And, if it, and I'm not to say everybody in yesteryear's churches were saved. I'm not saying that. But those that were, you knew it. You know it. So anyway, he, he begins his journey to Babylon because the king has given him uh, authorization. And Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to teaching his decrees and the laws of uh, Israel. So he had a specific purpose. God has a, a, a purpose for every one of us that belong to him. 
Not everybody has the same gift. Not everybody has uh, the same interest. Get it, find your place and get in. It used to be, and and no, never mind. Let's just move on. Stop, stop, stop it. Okay. King Artaxerxes has a letter, and he sends the letter, uh, and it says, this is a copy of the letter, but it was handwritten, signed by a notarized with the stamp of the king. This is a copy of the letter that King uh, Artaxerxes had given to Ezra the priest, because he was the teacher of the law, but he uh, was a man learned in, in demands and things concerning the decree. So he was the perfect person to go. When he uh, released so many of them, said, you can, you, can go, you can go, you know, back to Jerusalem. I know that's y'all's holy place. So the letter starts off, Arta X, Arta, Arta X, as king of kings. Well, that's all they knew. But it was an improper title because Jesus is the king of kings. However, however, that, that was uh, in their uh, part of their culture. So he allows, he, he addresses Ezra, and he says these words, Now I decree that any of the Israelites in my kingdom, including priests and Levites who volunteer to go to Jerusalem with you, may go. So he knows he's getting ready to go back to Jerusalem, and the king is he, he obviously learned again favor in the eyes of the king because they they did well as as slaves and. You know, it, it wasn't the easiest thing to do. But God touched this man's heart and, and because only he could give permission for any of them to go back to Jerusalem. And so whoever wanted to go, let them go. No problem. We're not going to have them hung, arrested, beat, none of that. He said, you are sent by, king, uh, by the king and his seven advisors to inquire about Judah and Jerusalem with regard to the law of your God, which is in your hand. He never said, he never said the law of my God. He never said that because he was a Babylonian. He wanted to. Do. And he says, moreover, you to take with you the silver, the gold that the king and his advisors freely given to the God of Israel, whose dwelling place is in Jerusalem. Now, that's important information. He understands the things that need to go back to the temple. Because when, when they were, uh, when the Medes and Persians came in, they just took everything, they stripped the temple, no regard. It, it would be the same as if someone came in here and just, oh, y'all don't need all these chairs. And threw some towels. Y'all can sit on the floor. We need these chairs. And carry them on out. They got the, they got the hall, you all out there. You know, that. And how would we feel coming in? Knowing that unchurched people are destroying the things that we have consecrated to God. Uh, my middle son, he was telling me the other day that his church got broken in. Now, there was a time, like I said, if, if you were drunk, you could try to straighten up. You had that kind of fear and respect for God. We had a deacon that, had, that said, as a young man, he was an alcoholic, and he would just drink till he fell out. But he would come and lay down in front of, in the woods across the street where he could hear everything. 
And at some point, he, he thought, uh, let me seek the Lord. Let me stop this and, 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 and come into the house of the Lord. So anyway, they had taken all this stuff, and all the gold, all the silver, uh, and other uh, precious stones. And he not only gave him permission, but he gave him money. He says, together with, uh, along with the advisors and the people that are going to help you rebuild, all of that could be, could have been enough. But then he goes further because he's a generous king. Together with all, not some or most, all of the gold you may obtain from the province of Babylon as well as the free will offerings of the people and priests for the temple of their God in Jerusalem. So he's giving him a, a, a whole, uh, a, a huge opportunity to take back to Jerusalem and restore the temple that Solomon had, had built or had had built. Solomon was a very wealthy king, and all the neighboring uh, nations, they paid tribute, and in the form of money, gold, uh, food, all kinds of things. And he says, but you take that money from, from all, all uh, from out of the treasure, nobody's going to harm you. Nobody's going to arrest you. Nothing. He says, with this money, be sure to buy bulls, ram, male lambs, together with their grain offering, their drink offering, and sacrifice on them, and sacrifice them on the altar of the temple of God in Jerusalem. Now, that, that's a lot. That's a whole lot. In other words, he's saying, whatever you need, I don't care what it is, whatever you need, take it with you. You and your fellow Israelites, they do whatever seems best with the rest of the silver uh, and gold in accordance with the will of your God. He, he recognized their God. And it's important that we recognize the will of God. So he's, he, he, he says, now you're going to have, after you buy all the things that you need to burn on the altar of God, then you're going to need the money to do some other things. So, so what, whatever's left over and whatever you say that God uh, has willed you, do so. Go ahead. Deliver to the God. Deliver to the God of Jerusalem all the articles entrusted for worship in your temple. And that is another uh, point of his of his respect to their God and the people of God, and understanding that they needed to go and build everything, get whatever articles, whether it was the, the grapes, what, whatever. Whatever. Whatever you need in the temple of your God, because it keeps stressing, uh, it keeps stressing here, your God, which means it God was not accepted by him. But he had respect for others. There are some things that, some places that we go that have different rules from what we have at this church. But if you're going to go, respect their house of work. If you, if you come out, uh, if you go home and throw your, throw your coat on the couch come in with your snowshoes on and drop them off on a, you know, your 
walk through the house with it, getting mud all over the carpet, and you know, and then you sit down, your work clothes, you smell like your job, you won't go take a shower. There are behaviors that go with church attendance. In our case, in this case, temple assembly. And he's just he's just telling them over and over. And anything else you need it. If I miss something, anything else for the temple of your God that you're responsible to supply, you can you can buy that out of the royal treasury. Now who gives who in high power is going to give you access to their safe deposit box? Or uh for the treasure. Who, who's going to just say you can have all anything you want? The other just does not work. So anyway, the provisions are there, and he sends this decree uh, that all the treasure of trans, uh, Euphrates Everybody, as you go along, whatever you need between here and there that belongs to me, king over, tell them to provide with diligence right away. Uh, whatever the priest, Esther the priest, and the teacher of the law of the God of heaven may ask him. Now, that was his job. His job was to pick the people, uh, accept the volunteers, uh, anybody that was going to work in the church, many people had forgotten. But see, we we forgotten a lot of stuff. When we had pews, we had bought, they, they all came with a little, uh, uh, like cubby hole kind of thing, at the, uh, sitting on the back, and they'd have hymns, the hymn book, and it would have Bible. And now you don't find that. If you don't bring a Bible, you don't, you don't have one. And yet God has made it comfortable for us from the standpoint we can get, we can get the Bible on any. I use my tablet because the writing is bigger. Uh, you can get it on your computer. When, I, when we were uh, staying home uh, during the COVID issue, when it first came. And I had to teach Sunday school by Zoom. And whatever I needed to do, whatever I needed to make it go forward, that's what I did because that was my responsibility. I'm not a priest, but I am a teacher. And the Bible, the Bible uh, from the Old Testament, God had priests prophets uh, that he spoke with directly gave them their job description. Well, by the time we get to the New Testament, when Jesus died and rose, see, that just killed the law. That doesn't mean don't, uh, you know, uh, one of the laws thou shall not lie. Well, you know, you the rules are there. That's what I want to say. The religious rules were in place. He goes on because he's super uh, uh, generous. He says you can take anything up to 100 talents, 100 talents of silver, 100 cores of wheat, 100 uh, baths of wine, 100 baths of olive oil, and salt without That's the same as go in Walmart and get whatever you want, whatever you need. Here's a hundred dollar gift certificate. When we get food stamps, you get you get what you want. That that that, that you're entitled to that. Anyway, whatever the God of Heaven has prescribed, let that be done, uh, and not just done, but done with. Diligence for the temple of the God of heaven. 
he continues to acknowledge who God is. He said, why should his breath, uh, why should his breath fall on the realm of the king and his son? He's saying, I know God will punish you if you mistreat his people, his chosen people, uh, and their gen uh, generation, sons and sons. And in my family, I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to be responsible for every family, every uh all of my children, all the people that are servants to me, all of us. They, if we don't do, we don't believe in it still, but if we don't do what God in heaven has prescribed, get it done and get it done quickly. Who wants, who in their right mind wants to be cursed by God? Uh, I immediately thought about Lot's wife when the, 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 the towns of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the wife looked back and turned to a pillar of salt. There's a penalty for failing to accept what God's instructions are. It, it just is. And he says, you also uh, know that you have no authority to impose taxes. Talking about these other people along the way. Tribute or duty on any of the priests, the Levites, the musicians, the gatekeepers, the temple service, or any other worker of the house of God. You don't get in there and do corrupt things. You just got back. Don't don't impose taxes. And there's a key there, there's well we don't it's not in our law today, but they okay, like everybody that works at the church, you have to declare that income, including the pastor. However, we don't have to pay taxes for the building or the income. Tithes and offerings. We don't have to pay taxes on it. And that's a wonderful thing. There are churches that are worth millions. And even, even in our church, money spent, we just got new carpeting, all kinds of new things to upgrade. We don't have to pay taxes on that. When you go to the store, you show them your taxes. Uh, uh, card and there are discount places that if you don't have that that uh, that card that says that you represent the church that, that, mm -hmm. uh, your taxes include that's me going shopping for me. but if I'm going to go get like communion stuff or uh, uh Cloths, tablecloths, the communion table, whatever, whatever. That's bought through people, and, and you know, most of the time you don't pay that. Not in every situation, of course, but certainly, because a lot of money goes into the church to pe when people are tied and correct. But don't, you know, we're not forced. And let me, let me go back and pick something up. When we go as individuals, even if we're purchasing uh, for the church, when you, when you show your ID card, then it's inspected by a merch, uh, merchant. Okay. So all these things don't, don't in other words, they don't mess with you. Don't impose tax. Don't impose tribute. Uh, you don't. The duties are like taxes on merchandise. And he has all these listed. And it's right. 
And then he goes on and, sit and gives Ezra something direct. And you, Ezra, in accordance with the wisdom of your God, which you possess, let me stop there. You ought to know that your pastor is a man of God. Now, not everybody is as selective as some other people. But whatever we do, we have to do it, uh, do it according to the wisdom of God. So I know that as a pastor, assistant pastor, they're, they should be under the will of God. You can tell when, when men or women that are pastors yeah, they got a service. Just be there. There's a behavior that comes from that. And he says, it, uh, so you need to appoint the magistrates, the judges, whoever you need to minister justice to all the people, all who know the laws of God should be in charge. And you, Ezra, are to teach any who do not know him. Now, in today's church, that would be teaching people uh, through preaching or, or classes or whatever. Do that to convert people. That's, that's our responsibility, to have, an, to have uh, an open heart or open heart to see people. Some churches you might go to, and you wearing your Sunday first, uh, Sunday best. Look at how they dress, and you feel like a tramp. Different different churches have different standards, and so if a church is full of wealthy people, I'm gonna feel uncomfortable. The people that have things in common need to be together. And he says, praise, uh, now he's ready to give praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. I'm sorry, it's Ezra talking. Who put it into the king's heart to bring honor to the house of the Lord in truth. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And what a blessing on earth he's got from doing the will of God and being so generous carrying out. So there should be honor of the church, a higher regard. When we come here, we come, we should come seeking the word of God, fulfilling our responsibility. If you were an usher, be on the door. If you were a deacon, be up front. You know, if you're a preacher, uh, we don't have a formal pulpit here. But if you're a preacher, you would be in the pulpit doing these associate things. So, and you do things that bring honor. And whoever extends his goodwill and favor before the king and his advisor, and all the king's powerful officials, because he, he's saying all of this, all of this is extended because the hand of the Lord my God was on me. I took courage, says I took courage and gathered leaders from Israel to go up with me. Do some people with purpose. But that's a job to go and find the contractors, uh, the furniture maker, all of anything, uh, sound system, anything that the, that the church needs. It's, it's necessary. And you have to be able, that's why they call it trustee. 
you should be truthful. You should be a person that, that spoke in trust. And spend the money for what it's supposed to be. You don't need a man who can steal to pick up the offering. That, that's totally against God. And again, this text for the temple. When son told me that, that it, and they broke it not once but twice, and he said they should ever read it. They took the, uh, the music thing, a keyboard, they took the whole sound system, they went in the basement and took the TV off the wall where they would go send their overflow. Just anything that had any value. They took it. And then they came back a second time. Just in case y'all, just in case you all have bought some stuff to replace what we stole the last time or the first time. No regard to anything. You're coming into the sanctuary of the Lord and have the dirty nerve to steal. You know, in yesteryear, you, well, it ain't just yesteryear. My baby girls, uh, we taught them so well about the responsibility that comes with the money. She saw a diamond, and she hit up great. She says, honey, I can't have this. It was only a dime. She not, but it wasn't her. It was the Lord. We don't know what that ten cents you get a whole bunch of them. Got some dollars, you know. And so the respect for the house of God totally necessary. Totally necessary. You gotta have order if you're gonna have. Order. It's that simple. If people came into the church and just did whatever they felt like doing, some going to bring their, their uh, sodas. Those are like Pepsi, going to bring their, their Pepsi. Those of us that just love to eat, well, they'll bring in sandwiches. They would, if we were, if we had no regard for God, that's how we do. That's exactly. So, anyway, they are blessed to be able to go and care and restore the temple. What a blessing that is. And it hurt son because he's a pastor for the city. It hurt him so much that somebody would do it. But at the same time, it enabled me to get them through the insurance, get all new stuff. You know, sometimes the Lord blesses us through what might be a disastrous for other people. A tornado came through the sky and blew off everybody's church and, and their roof. And when it tore the roof off of our house, I mean our church house, it everything got wet. And so insurance bought everything. So what a wonderful thing that is. So we always want the, or should want the best for God. Okay, any questions or comments before we close the lesson? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. On the back, on the back of the seats, the song books and the Bibles. Yeah, and you don't find them. Lot, and I'm not sure, and I'm not even gonna. You know, I don't know why various churches now are going to. I don't know, but it ain't my business. I just come in here, and it, I, I wouldn't care if you had. 
I, I come and sit on my little stool or pot because that's not what I'm coming for. Comfort. All right. Father, uh, Father God, we thank you for this blessing. We thank you for those that are here to hear your word. Lord, increase our numbers. Send more people that hunger and thirst after righteousness and your word. Again, we thank you. Allow us to say that we're able to return to this place for this purpose. In Jesus' name.